Hey, what's up? So this is a new series about JavaScript in the browser. Uh, we will learn together about JavaScript basics, about Git and GitHub, and uh, this will be for beginners. So I'm not, I didn't actually write this code. I will write it with you uh, live. So you will see how the usual uh, workflow will happen. So we will write code in JavaScript, HTML and CSS, creating a simple to-do list application um, and we will be using Git and GitHub to save our code and we will create branches and uh, pull requests and uh, so on. So this will be for beginners, like I said, and we can just start. So you can open your terminal or if you are in Windows, open your PowerShell and go to your desktop. So I will go there and I will create a folder. So I will, you can use this command. This stands for make directory okay so this is like an acronym uh, like sort of acronym but yeah so I will call it uh, JavaScript to do list and let's go into it to go into this directory you will type this CD and this stands for change directory and here you should type a path so I will put just the name of this fol folder and that's it I am in it and these commands will be the same if you are in Windows or even Mac. So let's open this with a text editor. I will be using Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm pretty sure you can install it by yourself if you are a beginner. It's, it's really easy. If you are trying to learn programming, uh, this should be, I mean, if you are a total beginner, this should be a nice task to go and install. It's really easy. There is an installer. So after you install it, you either open it and then open that folder in it or go to this folder in the, your terminal and just put code then dot uh, dot in the terminal stands for the current directory and double dots stands for the previous directory so the previous directory from this directory the JavaScript to-do list is the desktop so if I type two dots it will go back there if I type uh, dot it will stay it won't do anything because this is me this means the same directory so what we typed here code open the current directory this is what uh, this means and by the way, if to show the full path on where you are currently in the terminal, you will put PWA, which stands for Print Working Directory. So as you can see, I'm here. Anyway, so this is it. It's empty project. So let's create our basic structure. So as a beginner, you will do this, uh, in, at least in my opinion, a lot. You will create a folder called JS and a folder called CSS. This is how I learn this kind of stuff. I usually create these two folders. Then at the root, I will create an index.html. And these are actually uh, empty for now, right? Everything is empty. If you are in VS Code, there is an extension called emit. This simplifies the way that you write HTML. So. This actually is pre-installed in Visual Studio Code, but for example, as you can see, they put something like this UL, then this sign, LI, times the three, and just look what will happen. As you can see, it will generate that uh, HTML for us. So uh, there is a shortcut you can learn. If you put an explanation mark, and choose the first option, it will give you the basic HTML5 structure. Uh, you don't need to worry about this, but these the meta tags or anything inside the head tags as you can see these are information for the browser uh, to understand your page a little bit more so the meta tag this this meta tag tells the browser which character set we are using as a beginner you don't need to worry about that this is uh, helps the browser to make your page responsive you don't actually need to worry about that at the moment and this is actually the title of our web page this will be, as you can see, this one here, emit uh, in Visual Studio Code. I can actually prove this to you. Uh, I, if I search for the title, yeah. As you can see, this is the title. Uh, it's the same one as this. So emit uh, in Visual Studio Code. So yeah, this is just like small introduction to the whole web development thing. You will have your JavaScript, your HTML, your CSS. And let me just give you a small introduction about Git. So let's go to Git website. 
will open it so this is the website for it go to download I mean this will be for your operating system or Linux or Mac uh, it's really easy to download there is an installer after you download it go to your terminal and just put get dash dash version to make sure that you have it so I have 2.20 uh, the version doesn't matter any version will work and now to save our code in git you will open your terminal so there is a terminal in Visual Studio Code. You can do it from here, but I will open it like this. So you can, I think you can go to View and Pet Terminal like this, or the shortcut Control and the Backstick character. This one, it's it's the the keyboard the keyword next to your one character. So you can open it. So to save our code in Git, you will type in an in a new project Git in net. So this will tell uh, tells us that we initialized empty get repository in this path. And something really interesting, the way that git works, that it will save information about your project inside a hidden folder called .get. So if I put uh, list ls, uh, I'm not sure what this stands for, but this will tell us the current uh, things that exist in this directory. So we have our CSS folder, our JavaScript, our index.html. Now to see the hidden stuff, we'll put dash a. So as you can see, we have the .get hidden file folder, sorry. So we can, let's go to it, right? And let's put list. So as you can see, git will store, will like uh, store everything here about the whole project. Let's open it with Visual Studio Code and take a look at it. I know this is fast, I mean, we just, yeah, but yeah, I, I think this is a good way to learn. Just, I will dump so many things on you and uh, you can uh, understand them in your way. So as you can see, I mean, there is so much information. These are our branches, hooks, info. Uh, so yeah, right now it's empty. But this is how Git work. It will create an empty folder and store information in, in for the current repository there. So that's nice, but uh, let me return there. Git by itself uh, is good, but when you work with other developers, you will use another uh, tool called GitHub. And let me open my profile. So GitHub is a tool that works with Git. So when you create a Git repository, like we did here, we typed Git in Net that created a Git repository to save our code with, uh, in the cloud. So anyone can look at it, anyone can work with us on this code. We can actually go here and hit re create an account, of course, and go to repositories, create a new. So you need to create a repository and name it anything you want. And this one here, we will be pushing the code from it to this uh, repository. And this is actually, if you heard about this type of uh, board or te terminology, we have usually a local Git repository and a remote Git repository. The remote Git repository will be exist in GitHub, for example, or other services like Bitbucket or CodeCommit or GitLab. I'll be using GitHub, it's the most famous one. And we will have a remote repository and a local repository. Each, each time we create a changes in our local repository, we will push it to our remote repository. So anyone works with us can be up to date with our with the changes we are we are adding. Um, yeah, so we can actually start. So first thing we need to create a remote repository so we can push this code here this code here uh, over there. So let's add the repository name. I, I will return the, uh, the style to white. Okay, so this is how this will look like normally. I will call it the same way I call this file, uh, JavaScript to-do list. I will call it dash YouTube, because this is a YouTube series. Uh, that's for me, but for you, name it anything you want. This can actually be, uh, I mean, th the name of this can be anything that does not exist already in your uh, GitHub account. So you can actually create something called React, it's totally fine. Even, even though that React package or library exists in GitHub because this is unique to you and not the whole platform, which is very nice. So I'll make it public. Uh, I won't add any uh, one of those. 
and I can actually give you a small introduction readme files uh, is a file that when you open a repository in github for example let me show you one of mine come on it's a way to like specify what this project is about it will be displayed in a specific format so as you can see welcome to products this is our these are actually written inside a readme.md file and this is actually if I go to edit you will see it that it does not look exactly like the way it's displayed here so this is actually the text and this is actually the preview so we will come to this eventually but let's create our repository and you can create on create on this button but before that the git ignore is stuff that we put or folders that we put to exclude it from git process i mean it's not important now but we will come to it uh, the license is not that important at the moment so create repository this will show you uh, like a home page for this repository which is empty the remote repository is empty now we need to link these two repositories the remote one with the local one okay um, as you can see they are telling us how we can do it so if you are creating a new repository locally you will you can ignore this command but you are we already typed this git init right now we have this new command git add this is actually to add our files or our the, the things right we need to push to github so you can actually know these kind of things the new changes you made you can know them by typing git status as you can see i don't have my branches master no commits i have un untracked files so our in my index to touch html is untracked which means it's not uh, committed it's not on the remote branch so that's why you need to commit any change you make so let's commit so get commit and we need to pass a message you pass it like this so dash m um, then the message in between quotes so first i would call it first commit but yeah of course it won't work because i need to add this to be tracked so add you can type the name or add dot which will add all the changes you made uh, currently so let's put at uh, get status again so as you can see it's now in green which means it's added so we now can commit that so let's commit it with a message first commit as you can see it gives us some information a cool thing that i like to do is, is type git log and dash dash stat uh, it will show me some information like as you can see this is the first commit i did uh, i added 11 new lines as you can see into this file uh, to, to exit from this like weird thing just hit the queue this is vim by the way so now uh, we did this this tells us to change the branch i mean we can ignore this for now uh, so we have to do these two which is the same things as these two right so let's get this link this together the link these together so get remote at origin the link that they provided you here so this now the local repository will point out to the remote repository so there is no output in get usually when there is no output that means uh, everything works fine just in case you wondered why there is no output not sure why they did this so now we can tip, type git push dash u to ask you about your user information then we can put origin in our case it's master now right now they change it to main but we can work with master and uh, let's just wait for this to finish in your case this will ask you about your username and password so you need to create them okay i already created my username and password in this machine and it's using that to push here because no one can push to your repository unless it's you right there is another way you can add code to a, another person repository but it's not like this to push to your own repository you need to provide your username and password in your case when you put this get push dash your origin master it will ask you about your email and uh, password if you did not create a git account you will just uh, create them and this username and password should be the same one for your github account okay 
if you think about it I'm pushing stuff to github so the password and the email should match uh, I hope this was uh, like or at I hope this makes sense so let's now refresh we should see our index.html here so as you can see this is our index.html this is the commit message we created I mean I know this is like if you are completely new to this kind of stuff this is might be confusing but just uh, bear with me some I, I usually started learning or I started learning uh, uh, when I started learning I didn't understand most of the things uh, at some point they just click in when I do it when I do them uh, so much so but as you can see the thing is let me open it so it's the same thing we added there but uh, our folders here don't exist there so by default get want to track empty folders if you want to specify an empty uh, working directory or like this is how my folder structure would look like there is a file that we usually add it's not part of get but it's like a convention uh, let's start with dot then get uh, keep and also put it here like this now we have as you can see we have now two changes so let's put get status to see at them to look at them so untracked files inside the CSS folder on JavaScript so let's add them all of them like using this uh, command get add dot that will add everything so now let's commit these changes I will I will say keep JS and CSS folder as okay now get push origin master this will push the current committed changes into master now we can refresh we should see these two files so yeah uh, I hope this was useful this is the basics of uh, the, like the absolute minimum basics of git and github and uh, like maybe some commands in the terminal um, I mean at some point this like looks very obvious but when you are a beginner these kind of stuff like really confusing so yeah I think I can give you a quick recap of what we did so we created an empty folder then we went inside of it open it with Visual Studio code we created these two folders and this index.html for this we used emit which is a a tool that already integrated with Visual Studio code when you install it it gives you shortcuts to generate HTML so put explanation mark then hit enter it will give you this HTML uh, which is like the basic structure for HTML5 and after that we hit get init to create an empty git uh, or to create a git repository using this project and, th and that created an in or that created a folder a hidden folder called dot get which has information about our uh, working project so by the way if you delete this this project will, won't be anymore uh, linked with git which is very interesting and yeah so after we did this we went to github and created a new repository a remote repository this is what we call this and this one will be local and we linked them we pushed our changes after we used git add then git commit with a message we use these two to add our changes then commit them by a message then we push them so when we push them in the remote repository everything will be here but get github or get sorry won't track empty folders so we usually a common convention to add this empty file called get keep or dot get keep so you might have a question what's the point of these commit messages actually it will help you uh, in a real world project uh, you will have like I mean I'm not sure if I have a real world project but you will have so many commits let me show you one of uh, I think I will show you this one uh, I have multiple branches you don't need to worry about this one now but for example this one I have 77 commits and if you click on the commits you will see like each one of them uh, should def or should like specify a meaningful message that we can actually click on for example here I'm linking another uh, issue which you can click on and you understand why I created this commit message so yeah commits are really useful you should always uh, like write a good commit messages I mean, my internet connection is slow but whatever uh, 
yeah oh shit it's fed and by the commits when we def when we create so many commits each commit it's like a version of our code that's why uh, some people call get a version control system or a source control system I think version control works uh, best in our context as you can see this commit here which is on the second of of the first on august is like a version of this application and we can actually if you click here a browse the repository at this point in history each commit is a like it's like a version it's like a node in this uh a tree of history for this project so i can see how my application used to look like in that commit which is very nice so as you can see you can you can see it like this but my internet connection is slow and this is uh, the commit message I this is the issue that I referenced in my commit message we will come to these and this is how my application used to look like at this point in this commit and something interesting you, you see that we have this like weird string this is called hash each commit has a unique hash you can actually copy the hash and go and look at this can I look at this uh, code, look at this commit hash, or look at this uh, version of our code at this commit locally. You can actually put something like this, get check out, and you will get check out like this. You will put in the hash. This will convert everything here to this exact uh, commit. So you can maybe look at the code locally and understand it even more. So yeah, m m might be confusing, but uh, in the next video, we will start by creating some issues here. So we can actually reference this issue in our commit messages and improve our application step by step. And then we should have a complete to-do list application uh, with vanilla JavaScript. So yeah, I, I hope this was useful. And uh, bye.